We begin the Gemara today towards the bottom of Chavzayin Amud Beis, where it says, V'lei Malei, five lines from the bottom of the Amud. The Gemara here is talking about a case that Rav and Rabbi Yechenin spoke about, which is when you have two sisters that fell for Yibum, and uh, they fell for Yibum for one person, and the problem is that it's Achoy Zikukasai. So now, Rav said that if one of them died, it doesn't matter which one, whether the first one that fell for Yibum or the second one that fell for Yibum, so now there's no issue of Achay Sukkukasi anymore. Even though originally they were sisters, but now that one died, so the second one is the only one that's here for Yibum, so you can go ahead and do Yibum. So the Chiddush of what Rav is saying is, even though she was also once in the beginning when she fell for Yibum, but nevertheless, after the other one passes away, that Isser is removed. Rabbi Yechenin disagrees. Rabbi Yechenin says, in a case where you had sisters that fell for Yibum, you can't say that if either one passes away, so then it's not going to be an Isra of Achayis Kukasi anymore. He says, only if the second one passes away, then I'm going to say that the Isra of Achayis Kukasi doesn't apply anymore. And the reason is because the first one, originally, when she fell for Yibum, she was alone. And she was not also because of Achayis Kukasi. Elamai, what happened? Then the second sister fell for Yibum. Now the first one became Aser. So if the second one dies, what we say is that the first one that originally was Mutter could go back to the original Heter. The second one, since from the very first moment that she fell for Yibum, she was Aser, she was a Chesu that Aser remains forever. But the first one, since originally she was the only person here for Yibum, and there was no Chesu Kukasai, Elamai, in between, there was another sister. If that sister passes away, so now the first one could do Yibam. Now it was Rabbi Yechenen. On this, the Gemara asked a question from the Mishnah of the beginning of the Patek, where the Mishnah there spoke about basically this kind of a case, where you had two brothers that were married to two sisters, and both brothers passed away. And now these two sisters are up for Yibam for another two surviving brothers. And the Mishnah says, none of them could do Yibum on these two sisters because it's a Chayisiku Kasai. They both have to do Chalitza. So what the Gemara asks is, why did they both have to do Chalitza? According to Rabbi Yechenen, and the same really according to Rav, why can't we say, let them do Chalitza, let one of them do Chalitza for the second sister. Once you do Chalitza for the second sister, so now she's out of the picture, she's removed. Now there's only one sister left. And which sister is left? The first one. And the first one, which was originally alone, now should return back to her original heter. Because Lachatchila, she fell for Yibum alone and she, there was no Achayisiku Kasai. That second sister that, that, that then came into the picture, give her Chalitza and remove her now. And now you'll go back to having the first one that you could do uh, Yibum for. Because now she's back to her original heter. So why does the Mishnah say to do Chalitza for both? So Rabbi Yechenen had responded to this question, he didn't have an answer, he said the Tana of this Mishnah that says that both of them need to do Chalitza, I don't know who, who taught this, because it, it, it hit to him, he says this halacha doesn't make sense. So the Gemara now here is going to try a lot of different answers to this Mishnah and try to figure out why Rabbi Yechenen did not want to give any of the following answers here. Zok the Gemara, Velei Malei, why didn't Rabbi Yechenen answer? My Choyotza is Nami Diktani. When it says in the Mishnah you have to do Chalitza, what it meant is Choyletzes, Choyotza. It means that only one of them have to do Chalitza. The Mishnah Taka did not mean that you have to do Chalitza for both of them. For the second sister you're going to have to do Chalitza, but for the first one you don't have to do Chalitza, because the first one will go back to the original Heter, like Rabbi Yechenen had said. Says the Gemara, he didn't want to answer that because Chayl is Katani. It says in the Mishnah, Chayl is using a plural term that means both of them have to do Chalitza. Frak the Gemara, but Velay Malay, why didn't Rabbi Yechina want to answer on this Mishnah? My Chayl the fact that it uses a plural term of Chayl that both do Chalitza, it doesn't mean both sisters in this case do Chalitza, but rather it means Chayl is the Alma. It's giving you this general Allah to any other case similar to here that one sister is going to have to do Chalitza and the other one not. So it's using a plural term because it's giving you the halacha regarding any other case that's similar to here. Says the Gemara, you can't say it's going on other cases because Hare Elu Katani. It says Hare Elu Chalitza. These two sisters must do Chalitza. Frak the Gemara further, Veleime, why wouldn't he want to answer that over here, the reason why the Mishnah says that both have to do Chalitza is because the Chalitz lay Larishayna. What happened over here was one of the brothers gave Chalitza to the first one, Bereshe, in the beginning. 
So now, once you gave chalitza for the first one first, so then there's no option anymore to go and be miyabim the second one. The only reason Rabbi Yechanan says this would work, that you could do yibum for one of them, is if you give chalitza to the second one. So now the first one, which was originally mutter, could return to her original heter. But if you give chalitza to that first one first, the second one, which was asr, from the moment she fell for yibum, she's going to remain asr forever. And that's why the Mishnah says, in such a case, you have to do chalitza for both. So the Gemara says, no, Rabbi Yechanan did not want to give this answer either, because choyl tzois, the language of the Mishnah that says that they both hare elu doesn't sound like it's speaking about a specific bidiyevet case when you already gave chalitza to the first one. It's talking about in any case the that this is the halacha that you always have to do that you must give chalitza for both of them and there's no other takana. Another question: Why wouldn't Rabbi Yechanan want to answer that there's a gzeirim with the rabbanon here? Gzeirim that in this case when you have two sisters. Even though you would be able to say that let him do chalitza only for the second one. And then the first one would be available for Yibum, but maybe there's a gzeire. Gzeire, dilme, kodem v'chalitz, ladishayna bereisha. Maybe if you're going to allow what Rabbi Yechanan said, that you, could, you should go ahead and do chalitza for the second one, and then the first one would be mutter, people might confuse that. People might say, oh, if you could do chalitza for one and yibum for the other, maybe the reverse is also possible. Maybe give chalitza for the first one and then you do yibum for the second one. And that's not allowed because the second one was usher from the very first moment that she fell for yibum. So in order not to confuse it, maybe there was a gzayda with the that when you have these two sisters that are available for yibum together, I make a gzayda that you have to give to chalitza to both of them. Maybe that was the reason why the Mishnah said that harei lo chalitzas because of a gzayda with the but that, that gzeda though, is only before the fact. Right now, when you have two sisters here together, you're going to have to give chalitza for both of them, not to get confused. But, after the fact, if you did give chalitza only to the second sister, then the halacha of Rabbi Yechenin might still be right, that once you gave chalitza only to the second one, now the first one is not a chalitza kukasi anymore. Now the first one is alone, and she goes back to her original heter, and she can do yibum, you can, she can get married. Says the Gemara, no, it's not mashma so on the Lashon of the Mishnah. The Mishnah uses the term and it says, meaning that the leket din yibum hocha klal. That language of is saying that there's no halacha of yibum that's possible here at all. Not only because of exeda, in it, and it's telling you that now when you have two sisters here together, so there's exeda that lachatchile you should go and give chalitza to both of them. Even with the yevet, if you gave chalitza to the second, there is no yibum for the first in any scenario. So it doesn't fit with what Rabbi Yechenin said. Why to the Gemara pushes further and says, Valei, Malay, why wouldn't the Gemara want to answer and say, Gzeire, that over here, that there's a Gzeire mit Rabbanon, Sheme Yomos, Vaosel, Lavatl, Mitzvah, Yevomen. Okay, so what's the Gemara saying here? So Rashi explains that, if you remember, we had before in the Gemara, when it comes to the Isra of Achai Ziku Kosai, there are two opinions why you can't marry a sister of, an, of another Zikuka. One reason is because Yesh Zika. When you have these two sisters, it's as if you're already married to one, and therefore the other one is like the sister of your wife. Another reason is because Shema Yomaz Vasa Levato Mitzvah Sivama, which means that really there's no Zika, but because if one brother does Yibum for, for one of the sisters, and now what happens if the other brother dies? Now, the second sister, you're the only one that could do Yibum for her. But now you can't, because you already married their sister. So by doing Yibum for one, you're going to be mevatel the mitzvah of Yibum for the other, if the other brother dies. Right? So that, that would be the reason why there's an issue of a Chayseke Kosei. So what the Gemara is saying is, that if, that we could, maybe we could say as follows. Rabbi Yechenin said his halacha according to the Mandama that holds Yesh Zika. And the Mishnah is going according to the man, the Amma, that holds Ein Zike. And therefore Rashi explains, if you hold Ein Zike, and therefore the whole issue of not marrying a Chayzik Ukasa is a Gzeda, that you might come to be Mavat al Mitzvah Sivamin, that Gzeda would apply in every case. That Gzeda would apply when you have the two sisters here together. And even if you went and did Chalitza to one of them, still you can't do Yibam for another, because we don't want you to come to be Mavat al Mitzvah Sivamin, and this is something that people can get confused about and therefore either way the mission is saying you have to do chalitza for both of them 
Where is Rabbi Yechanan? Rabbi Yechanan is going according to the opinion that holds Yash Zike. And if you hold Yash Zike, so then the issue is that this is like your wife's sister. So therefore maybe that, the Chachamun will not geyser so far because that's something that people understand, that there's a difference here. There's a difference between the first sister and the second sister. The first sister was Mutter Lechatchile, the second sister was not. Because the first sister was there alone and originally, the second sister was not, and therefore there's a difference between them. And over there, the din of Rabbi Yechanan applies. So in other words, the point the Gemara is saying over here is, maybe our Mishnah is going according to the Man Dama that holds Ein Zike, and therefore the whole thing is a Gzeire Sheme Yomuz Levatl Mitzvah Yivamin, that you only are not allowed to do Yibum because of Gzeire that you'll be Mevatl Mitzvah Yivamin, and that Gzeire applies whether you do Chalitza for the first sister or whether you do Chalitza for the second sister, it makes no difference. But the Gzeire, but, but however, the Isser of Achayzu Kukasa, according to the Mandom of Yesh Zike, maybe that applies only to the second sister and not to the first one. So the Gemara says, Rabbi Yechenen does not want to interpret the Mishnah this way because Rabbi Yechenen lemisa loy chayish. Rabbi Yechenen doesn't hold of that whole concept. There's no, uh, there's no chashash. We're not concerned that maybe the other brother will die and therefore the second sister that's there for Yivum, you won't be able to do Yivum for her. He's not chayshish for such a thing that maybe another brother would die. Vaita the Gemara asks yet another question here. Velei melei Rebbe Yazehi. Why did Rabbi Yechinen not want to answer that our Mishnah follows the opinion of Rabbi Yezer? What did Rabbi Yezer say? The Omar, Rabbi Yezer says, Kivin she'omda olav shor achas be'iser. If you have a Yivoma, that for even one moment, was an Issa for her to get married to the Yavam, Nasr al of Elamis. She becomes Asa forever. What Rabbi is saying is, even if you had a Yavama that was originally Mutter to her Yavam, something happened in between that for one moment she became Asa. So then once that Issa took effect for one moment, it remains forever. So our mission here that says that you must do Chalitza for both of them is going according to Rabbi Yezer. Rabbi Yechanan, however, is not paskaning like Rabbi Yezer, we paskan like the Chachamim, and therefore Rabbi Yechanan is saying the first sister that was originally Mutter, if later the second sister passes away, that original Hatta comes back. Says the Gemara, no, he did not want to say that our Mishnah and the Reisha goes like Rabbi Yezer, because with the Sefer Rabbi Yezer, because since the Sefer is Rabbi Yezer, then the Sefer of the Mishnah, it afterwards says Rabbi Yezer brings the Machloikis of Beshamay and Besilol, so Reisha lav Rabbi Yezer. So the Reisha is not like, like, like Rabbi Yezer. But why wouldn't Rabbi Yechinen want to answer to, this, to the question that was asking him from the Mishnah that maybe the Mishnah is a different case? The Nofel Bevasachas. That in the Mishnah there is no first and second sister. They, they both fell for Yibum at the exact same time. The whole concept of Rabbi Yechinen's Allah was that he had a first sister, a second sister. The first one was originally Mutter. The Mishnah is speaking about when they fell together. And then you would have to say that our Mishnah goes according to Rabbi Yaisi Aglili. The Omar, Rabbi Yaisi Aglili said, It is possible that the two brothers passed away in the exact same moment, and therefore both sisters fell for Yibum at the exact same moment, and therefore there's no first or second. Says the Gemara, no. He didn't want to answer that because Leisosan Lantanek Rabbi Yaisi Aglili. Tanava Mishnah, which is a Stam Mishnah, would not be saying a halacha like Rabbi Yaisi Aglili, which is a single opinion that we don't pass in like. Fact, the Vaiter, and this is the final question the Gemara asks on this. The Malay, but then why didn't Rabbi Yechanan want to answer that in our Mishnah that it says that you do Chalitza for both of them? The reason is the Layad Inon Hai Nafel Bereisha, because the Mishnah, even though you can't be Mitzamtzim, but it's possible that the case is that we don't know which sister fell for Yibum first and which one second. So since we don't know, you can't apply the Halach of Rabbi Yechanan that do Chalitza for the second and then the first should become Mutter. We don't know which is the first or the second. Says the Gemara, Yihachi, if that would be the Pshat and our Mishnah, so then Hainer Diktani. What does the Mishnah say afterwards? That Kodmu Vekonsu. What happened if these two brothers that were not allowed to do Yibum for any of these sisters, that's Achay Zekukase, they were supposed to do Chalitza for both of them. What, ha- what happens if both of these brothers went and got married to both of these sisters? What does the Mishnah say? Yitziu. They have to send them out, they can't remain married to them. Now the question is, why not? If the case over here is that we don't know which one of these sisters was first and which one was second, so then the question is, why do both of them have to send away their wife? And Gemara explains, Bish loime rishain, the Bach is going to say rishain. Bish loime rishain, when it comes to the first brother that was Miyabim, one of these sisters, so we understand why he has to send away his wife. 
Because Amrin and Lay, we tell him, Man Shar Yalach, who gave you the hetter to do Yibum for this sister? She, she's at Chaisuk Ukasai. Two sisters are Zakuk to you. How can you go ahead and do Yibum for one of them? Now we understand why we would have to send her away. However, when it comes to the second sister that the second brother did Yibum for, Omar, so this brother can say, Chavaroi, my friend, my brother, Shniya Yibum. He did Yibum for the second sister. I'm doing Yibum for the sister that really fell for Yibum first. And if the one that I was Miyavim fell for Yibim first, that's allowed. Once my brother did Yibim for the second one, so now the second sister is removed from the case, and now the first sister remains alone, and once she remains alone, so she goes back to her original Heter. If this is the sister that was the Rishayna, she was the one that was there originally and was Mutter, so now I'm, do, I'm being Miyavim, the, the one that was originally Mutter. How can we force him to divorce, to send away his wife? He could argue with us and say, we don't know which one was first and second. I'm telling you that I'm doing Yibam for the one that was there first, and therefore now she came back to her original Heter. So the Gemara says, you're right, that's exactly the problem here. And Hainu, the Ka'am this is why Rabbi Yechanan said, This Mishnah of the two sisters where it says that you have to do Chalitza for both of them, I don't know according to whose opinion this is said, because Rabbi Yechanan says it doesn't make sense to say that you must do Chalitza for both of them. You can do Chalitza for the second, and then the first sister goes back to her original Hatter. Once the second sister is removed from the picture, and now the first sister is the only one that's here, she goes back to her original Hatter. When she fell for Yibum, she was alone. The Gemara now asks, from our Mishnah as well, from another part of our Mishnah, on Rabbi Yechanan's Din, Tanan, we learned in our Mishnah, so again, we're talking about in our Mishnah, the case of two brothers that were married to two sisters, and those two brothers passed away, and now there's another two, two brothers that are alive that have to do Yibum for these two sisters. So the Mishnah continued regarding this case and said, If for one of the brothers, one of these sisters are Asr and Issa Erve, so then for him, now there's only really one sister that's here for Yibum. So Asr Ba, that one that's Asr, Issa Erve, so he doesn't do Yibum with her. He could do Yibum for the sister. There's not a chayziku kasa, there's only one that he's doing yibum for. But vasheni, but for the other brother, which both of these sisters are available for yibum for the other brother, asa b'shteyan. So he's going to be asa to do yibum for both of them, because for him there is an issue of a chayziku kasa. That's the halacha of our Mishnah. Okay, so now the Gemara here is going to explain this Indian. Uh, when it says here that for one of the brothers, one of these sisters is a isa erva for him, there could be any isa erva. So the Gemara will choose the example, the simplest example, the Issa Erva of a mother-in-law. One of the brothers, for him, one of these sisters also happens to be his mother-in-law, a Issa Erva. So now the Gemara explains as follows. Why would this be a question on what Rabbi Yechenin said? So now Sal Kedaitach, so we think to interpret the Mishnah which does not specify as follows. That what happened over here is, so again, for the first brother, one sister is his is a relative, is, is his mother-in-law, and the other one he could do Yibim for. So now the, we, we were thinking is the Nafla Chamay Said Chila. So between these two sisters, the one sister that's his relative, that's his mother-in-law, that's the one that fell for Yibim first, alone, first. And now, if so, the question is, according to Rabbi Yechenin, there should be no problem here, because let's do it as follows. Vamai, why does the Mishnah say that for the second one, it's also to do Yibim for both of them? Let's do as follows. Leiku chasen, let this first brother here, that's also the son-in-law of one of these sisters, right, for him, she's, she's his relative, because she's, uh, she's his mother-in-law, so let this son-in-law come along and le'yabim ha'ach te'enachama yisabereisha. And let him do yibum for the one, for the other sister. That's the only one that he could do yibum for, and therefore there's no issue of a chayseku kasai. Let him do uh, yibum for the one that's not his mother-in-law first. And now, v'tehevi chamoisai, legabe idoch, and now, the one that's his mother-in-law, which fell for yibum first, right? So if so, according to Rabbi Yechenin, what happens now? What's the status of that mother-in-law, which fell for yibum first? Legabe idoch, for the other brother, which is not the other brother's mother-in-law, so let it be for him, ki yivame, shehutra, for him she's a yivame that originally was mutter, 
because she fell for Yibam first alone and she was totally mutter. And then the Nesra, she became also because the second sister fell for Yibam as well. But now the Chazra, the Hutra. But now she goes back to her original Heter since the other brother did Yibam for the other sister. And once the, the brother did Yibam for the other sister, so now. The, 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 this remaining sister is the only one that's left there in the picture, and therefore Tachza let Teira Arishon. And now she should go back to her original Heter. Why can't we do that according to Rabbi Yechenin? So in the end, you should be able to do Yibum for both of these sisters in such a case. Amr Rav Pape, Rav Pape says, so we must say that this is not the case of our Mishnah. What is the case over here? Kagoin, the Nafla Hach, the Einach HaMoisai Beresha. The one that's not your, the, the mother in law. That's the one that fell for Yibum first. And therefore, that's the one, that's the only one that the first brother could go ahead and do Yibum for. So when the second brother wants to go and do Yibum for the remaining sister, that remaining sister was Asr from the very first moment. She never had a moment of Heter. So this whole thing of Rabbi Yechen, it does not apply there that she would go back to her original Heter. Okay, the Gemara now goes to the next section of the Mishnah. What did it say? Rabbi Yezah, Rabbi Yezah said, and this is talking about a case where these two sisters, you were not allowed to do Yibam for them, you were supposed to do Chalitza for both of them, but both of the brothers went and they got married to them anyways. They did do Yibam. So Rabbi Yezah said, it's a machlekes between Beishamai and Beisilo. The Gemara here brings a Braise that brings more opinions about what this machlekes is. Tanya, Rabbi Yezah, and Rabbi Yezah said, Beishamai yoimrim yekaimu. Rabbi Bishamay says, Bidiyevit, if you got married to both of these sisters, you could leave them. You could, they could be remarried to them. Basilo Lainim Yetziu. Basilo says, no, you have to divorce them. Rab Shimon Aimer, Yekaimu. Rab Shimon says, they could remain married to them. Abishol Aimer, Abishol says, regarding this, that Rabbi Yezah said, that it's a machlaikis between Bishamay and Basilo, he reverses their opinions. He says, Kal hoyalahem le basilul bedovaze. It's basilul that was lenient about this because she beshama yaimrim. It's beshama the one that said yitziu that you have to divorce both of these sisters. Or basilul aimrim yikaimu. Basilul was the one that says that you can remain married to them. Well, now the Gemara wants to understand this middle opinion that was brought over here, which was Rab Shimon. What exactly is Rab Shimon saying? Rab Shimon keman. According to, according to who is Rab Shimon going here when he said yikaimu that you can remain married to them? Is he coming to explain Beishamai's opinion? So then that's exactly what Rabbi Yezah said. Rabbi Yezah said, according to Beishamai, you can remain married. That Beishamai was the one that was lenient. Is he coming to explain Beishamai's opinion and saying that according to Beishamai, you can remain married to them? That's exactly what Abishal said. That according to Beishamai, he was the one that's lenient. So who, what's Rabbi Shimon adding over here? Says the Gemara, Hachi Ka'omar. This is what Rab Shimon is saying. Loi nechluku beshamay yubisilul bedovazeh. Beshamay and Basilul do not argue about this subject. They both agree, Yekaimu, that you could remain married with the Yeved to these two sisters. Then the Mishnah said, Hoisa achas me'em chulu. So the Mishnah says, what happens in a case where you have, like we said before, you have these two sisters that are now here for Yibum, for the two brothers. But what happens if you have one sister is an erva to one brother. So then for him, there's only one sister that's available for Yibum. There's no issue of a chaisa kukasai. And then for the other brother though, if both of them are available for Yibum for him, so for him, he has to do chalitza for both of them. So the Gemara asks, why does this Mishnah have to specify and say this din over here? Hotanina chodezim, this halacha was already mentioned once before in the previous Patek. On Davchof, there's a Mishnah there that says this. What does the Mishnah there say? Ah, if you have a sister which is also an erve, vimta, and she's also a yevama. So the Mishnah there is talking about a case where you have two sisters. The same like over here. And one is an erve and one is not. So then the Allah is, because one sister is an erve and one is not. So there's no issue of a chaystiku kasai. Because one is an erva. So it said that Allah already in the previous Mishnah, in, in, in the previous Patek. Why is it saying it over here again? Now the difference between the case there and the case over here is, there we're talking about two sisters that fell for Yibum for one brother. Over here we're talking about two sisters that fell for Yibum for two brothers. That's one difference. Another difference is that over here we're talking about a case where one sister is an erva for one of the brothers. But for the second brother, both sisters are available for Yibum. So it's a different case of here. So the Gemara now will explain, because it's a different case, there's a Chiddush in both of these Mishnayis. 
So like the Gemara at Sriche, we need the halacha to be taught in both cases. The Yashmin and Hasam, if would only tell me the case over there, when you're talking about two sisters that fell for Yibam, for one brother, and one of these sisters is an Erve, so really only one is available for Yibam. So Hasam over there, I allow you to do Yibam for one sister, Mishum Delekil and Mishum Sheni. Because over there, there's no gzeda that if I'm going to allow one to do yibum, you might confuse and think that the other could also do yibum. Like in our Mishnah. In our Mishnah, for one brother, it's allowed to do yibum. Because for him, one sister is an Erva. But for the other, both are available for yibum, so he can't do yibum at all. In our Mishnah, there's room to say that you should be geyser. If you're going to allow one brother to do yibum for one, the second brother might come and make that mistake. So over here, the heta is not so pashit. In the previous Mishnah, though, the Hatta is more simple. There's one brother, and therefore for him, one is an Erev and one is not. So he only has one sister, so he does Yibam for that sister. So therefore, it has to say the halacha of our Mishnah over here. Over here, because there are two brothers, if you can allow one of the brothers to do Yibam, so the second brother might think that the same halacha applies to him. Even though for him, both of these sisters are available for Yibam. So maybe over here, I don't say that that one brother, that one of the sisters is an erva to him, he still can't do Yibam to that other sister. Says the Gemara, and the same is that you also say a svar in the reverse. Vyashmin and Hacha, if we'd only say the case of our mission over here, where there are two brothers, and one brother is not doing Yibum at all. So over here, I would say, Mishum de Ike, Sheini de Kamuchach. Over here, since the second brother is not doing Yibum at all, that's a reminder for you that there's an issue of a Chaisu so therefore the other brother will know that he could only do Yibam for one of them. And that reminds, that, that itself is, that it makes it clear over here that there's an issue of a Chayisuku Kosai. Avol Hasam de Lekesheni. But over there that there is no second brother to remind you this. Eimeloi. In such a case, maybe I would say that you could confuse this case with another case. And therefore I would think to say that if there's one brother and there are two sisters here, even if one is an Erve, you still should not do Yibum at all for such a case. Because you might come to confuse it and think that any time there's two sisters for one, for one brother, you can do Yibum for one of them. So therefore Tzricha. That's why it has to say that case as well. The next case of the Mishnah, it said, Isser Mitzvah That when you have these two sisters that fell for Yibum, but one of them was an Isser Mitzvah. Isser Mitzvah means that one of them is only an Erva Midrabonan. The other case the Mishnah said was, or one of them is an Isser Erva of Alav, not an Isser Erva of Akadis. So then the Mishnah said, in such a case, so you could, you could only do Chalitza and not Yibum. This is also something that we learned in the previous Masechta over there also on Davchov, in that same Mishnah. It says that very same halacha over there. It says the halacha, that is a mitzvah, if a woman falls for Yibum, and she's an erve to the Yavah Midrabanon, or the Issa Kedusha, or she is an erve of a lav, so you could only do chalitza, but you can't do Yibum. You still have to do chalitza because it's, it's only is erva mid rabbanon or it's only is erva of lav. So really the whole mitzvah of yibum is not uh, going to fall off. But you can't do yibum. So just like it says that halacha over there, why does it have to repeat the same halacha over here regarding a case when there are sisters? In the previous Patek, when it brought the halacha, it was talking about one woman for yibum. And it's saying that if that woman was here for yibum, if there's is mid rabbanon of an erva or is of lav, there's no yibum. Over here we're talking about sisters, but it's, it's the same point basically. That when you have sisters and one of them is an Ism de Rabbanon or an Ister of Lav, so then you do Chalitza. So why does it have to repeat it again? Says the Gemara, Hasam, there's a difference because Hasam, Iser Mitzvah Luchuda. Over there we're discussing one woman that's up for Yibum and for her there's an Ism de Rabbanon. And therefore we say, but because of the Ism de Rabbanon there's no Yibum but there's Chalitza. That's, that's the halacha there. Hacha, but over here there's a bigger chiddish, because iser mitzvah ve'achaysa. Here we're talking about two sisters that are up for yibum, and one of them is also as a erve midrabanan. So over here, maybe I would think there's a hetter for this. Maybe I would think to say, Leikem iser mitzvah v'makem iser erve. Maybe that one sister that's also as a erve midrabanan, maybe I should consider her to be mamish like a full iser erve. And therefore, it's like that sister is out of the picture. Just like in a case where one sister is a full Issa Erva, she's out of the picture. Maybe even only the Issa Midrabanan is like a regular Issa Erva. And now I would think that the other sister could do Yibum. 
That's what Kamash Mulan, our Mishnah is teaching us that that's not the case. She's only a Issa Avrim that Abanon. So Minatayre, you do have two sisters that are up for Yibum, so there's still the issue of Achais Zikukasai. How do you even have such a hava minute? You're saying I should consider that one sister that's only Asimah the Rabbanon to be like a full Issa Erva and now the second sister could do Yibum. Kivin the Midairaisa, Ramya, Kamei, since Minatayre, even this sister that's Asimah the Rabbanon, but Minatayre, she also is here for Yibum, Kapaga, Bachai, Sikukasai. So now there's an issue of a Chaisi Kukasai. Minatayre, there still is an issue of a Chaisi Kukasai. Why would, why would I think to say that because of Issa Avram that are that should allow you to do Yibum on the other sister? It says the Gemara, no, because Salke Daita Chamine, I would think to say that Mishum Mitzvah, for the purpose of giving you the ability to do the Mitzvah of Yibum, Minatayre, Ovud Rabbanon. Maybe Chacham made a special Takana to allow you to do this. So as Rashi explains, the whole Isser of a Chaisiku Kasai is only a Isser Medir Rabbanon. It's not a Isser Medir So maybe in this case, Chachamim removed their Isser Medir Rabbanon of a Chaisiku Kasai in order to allow you to do Yibum for the other sister. So maybe that, that would be the Swara to say that if for one sister there's an Isser Erve Medir Rabbanon, Chachamim consider that to be like a full Isser Erve and now you have just one sister that you do Yibum for so you can do the Mitzvah. Maybe Chachamim suspended their Isser for this purpose. Kamash Malan, that's why our Mishnah is saying that no, there still is an issue of a Chayisiku Kasa here. Then the Mishnah said, Haisa, Achas, Mehen, Chulu. So this is going on the Mishnah that's uh, talking about the, the, the Isser of when you have two brothers, again going back to the same case, you have the two brothers here that have to do Yivim for two sisters. And one sister was the Issa Erva to one brother, the other sister was the Issa Erva to the other brother. So it comes out that each brother only really has one woman that's up for Yibum for him. So therefore each, each Yavam could do the Yibum for that sister that's mutter to him. Says the Gemara, why does, this, why does the Mishnah have to say this now again? Hasu Lomeli. Why does it have to say this again? Hainu Hach. It's basically the same point that it said before. Right before this, the Mishnah said the case where for one brother, so he has one of them, one of the sisters, which is the Issa Erev, and the other one is not. And for the other brother, both of them are available for Yibam because none of them are an Issa Erev to her. And there the Mishnah said, so for that one brother, that only one sister is up for Yibam, do Yibam for her, and not for the other one. And for the other brother, you can't do Issa to either. Now adding this case where you have an Issa Erev to each one of the brothers of one of the sisters, and therefore you could do a Yibam to one of them, is the same point like the previous case where you're saying that regarding one brother, that for him, one of the sisters is Issa Erva and one of them is not. Why does it have to repeat it again regarding both brothers? Says the Gemara, no, there's a Chiddush here as well. What is that? Sorry, this is part of the question here. The Gemara first says, Malich Lachad. What difference does it make if you're teaching me this Allah regarding one brother, that for him, one of the sisters is Issa Erva and Mali Litre. And what difference does it make if you're teaching me this Allah regarding both brothers, that for both brothers, one of the sisters is Issa Erva. And says the Gemara Tzricha, I have to teach you both of these cases. The Yashmin and Hasam, if I would have only the first case, where only for one of the brothers, one of the sisters is Issa Erva, but for the second one, both are Aser, Maybe only in this case I say that because the second brother is not doing Yibum for neither of them, so this is, shows you clearly that there's an issue, that there's an issue of Achais Zukukasai. So that's why in such a case they allow the other brother to do Yibum for one of them. But maybe in the second case of the Mishnah here, where it says that for both brothers there's no issue of a because for each one of them, one of the sisters is an Erve, so therefore maybe in such a case, because each brother is ending up doing Yibum for one of them, so there's nothing to remind you here that there's an issue of a You might come to think that in another case, when you have two sisters, you can go ahead and do Yibum for, for either one of them. So therefore, like, maybe I would think over here that you can't do Yibum in such a case. And the reverse, the Gemara says, Yashmin and Hacha, if we only say the second case, where for each brother there is an Erve, and therefore each brother is only doing Yibum for one of them, maybe I would say on the contrary, Tarvayu Mochachi, maybe over here, because 
both brothers know that they could only do Yibam for one of them, so even though it's sort of less of a Hechacha, because it's not a case where, where there's one brother that can't do Yibam to either one of them, but in both, for both brothers they can do, both do Yibam only for one of them, so Tarvayu Muchachi Adadi. So both of them are, are a reminder for each other that each one knows they can only do Yibam for one of them. Avol Iddoch Loi. But when it comes to the first case, one of, so you have one brother that they can't do Yibam for neither of them, and the other brother comes and does Yibam for only one of them. So therefore over here, I would think that, uh, that it's not so clear what the Allah is. So therefore Tzrich, that's why it has to, you have to have both of these cases. So what did it say? The next thing in the mission is Zuhi Sha'amru. This is the case that was said, again, going back to the Lashon, the Gemara quoted before the Lashon of the Mishnah, that Zuhi Sha'amru, uh, the Lashon of the Mishnah was, Achaysa Keshehi Yivimta Eichaleta Saimis Yabemis, which means that if it's a sister and one of the sisters is an Erve, then for the other sister that's not an Erve, you can do Yibum. So this, this language of the Mishnah, Zuhi, Sfrekta Gemara, Zuhi Lamutamai. Why does it have to use this expression, Zuhi, that it means only in this case? It seems like it comes to exclude something. What, what is it excluding? It says the Gemara, Lamu'ute Iser Mitzvah Lezev, Iser Mitzvah Lezev. What it's coming to exclude is, the Mishnah said, if you have two brothers, and each sister was an erve to one of the brothers, so then I say that each brother could do Yibum for one of the sisters. That's not an erve. But it's coming to exclude what happens if you have that each one of the sisters is the Ismid Rabbanan of Erve to one of the brothers. In such a case, I don't say that you could do Yibum on the other sister, since the Issa Erve is only a Issa Erve Mid Rabbanan. Fact Gemara again, Hosu Lamali. Why do I need to teach this halacha over here again? Hainu Hach, this is repeating the same halacha that it said before that if you only have an Issa Erve Mid Rabbanan, it doesn't take away the Isr of a Chaisu because Minat Teireh, she's still up for Yibum, and therefore it's still two sisters here. Mali, again, the Gemara explains the question, Mali Lechad, before we taught this halacha, when there was for one brother, that for, for regarding one brother, one of them was the Issa Mitzvah, and the other one was not, and Mali Letre, over here, in this miut of Zuhi, we're teaching this regarding both brothers. What difference does it make? So the Gemara, there is a difference because Mao the Teime, because I would think to say, going back to the Svara that the Gemara said before, the Gemara said that there's a Svara to say that the Chachamim considered their Iser of Ervim and Rabbanon to be like an Ervim and Atayre in order to allow the other sister to do the mitzvah of Yibum. So the Gemara now says as follows, maybe I would say, Ki loy omrinon oiki iser mitzvah b'mokim iser erve. When do I say that I do not consider the iser erve mit rabbanon to be like an iser erve min atayre in order to allow the mitzvah of Yibum to be done for that one sister? That's only heiched, ikil migzar mishum sheni. That's only in a case where you're being geyser because of the second brother. You don't want the second brother to make the same mistake. Because you have a second brother that can't do Yibum for either one of them. So you don't want him to learn from the other brother. But in a case where this is true about both brothers. For both brothers, there's one sister that's a Isra Midrabanon, Isra Erva Midrabanon. So for both brothers, they should be allowed to do Yibum for one of the sisters. So maybe I should say that over here, Lahai Okimna, Isra Mitzvah, Bamakim Isra Erva. So the Chacham over here may be said, let's consider to be this Erva of Midrabanon, to be as strong as the Erva Minatayre for one brother, and therefore the point is to allow that brother to do his mitzvah of Yibum. Ulahai, and for the other brother, Aikimna Issa Mitzvah B'mokim Issa Erve. For him, the one that's Aser as an Erve Mid Rabbanon, for him, we consider it to be just like an Issa Erve Min and now he could do his mitzvah of Yibum. V'liyavmu, and let them both do the mitzvah of Yibum. Again, based on the point that we learned before, maybe Chachamim suspended their Isser of Achais Kukasai for the purpose to allow both of these brothers to do Yibum. Kamash Malan, that's why the Mishnah has to say this case as well, that Chachamim did not suspend their Isser of Achais Kukasai in this case. Okay, now the Gemara starts, a new Indian, and this Hemshech uh, of the here is actually a Chazara, almost word for word, from the Gemara that we had before on Daf Tes and Daf Yud. And there's a little bit of an addition at the end of the Gemara where it spells it out more, but it's mamish the same Indian. I'm, gonna, I'm, not, I'm not sure I'm going to explain the whole Indian by Arich, the way I explained it before, but we'll go through it. So the Gemara, Omer Rav Yudah, Omer Rav. So Rav Yudah said in the name of Rav, Echem Tani Rav Chiyah. Similar, we had Rav Chiyah said. The Kulot, regarding all of the cases that we had in the Mishnah over here. So when it says over here, Bekulon, 
is actually goes on all of the arayas that are mentioned in the mission in the beginning of the Masechta. In the beginning of this Masechta, it mentioned that there are Tezvav arayas. So what the Gemara is saying here is, regarding all of those Tezvav arayas, I could apply it to the Mishnah over here that we're talking about, which is, that what's Asr for one brother is going to be Mutter for the other brother. When you have these two sisters, and one sister is an Erva, so then, so then, the one that's a Issa Erva you don't do Yibum for, but for the other one you can do either Chalitza or Yibum. So again, the Allah of our Mishnah was when there were two brothers that have to do Yibum for two sisters. And there's no Yibum when it's a Chais the Kukasai. But if one sister is a Issa Erva for one brother and the other sister is a Issa Erva for the other brother, so each brother could do Yibum for one sister. So what the Gemara now is saying is this concept of it being an Issa Erva for one brother and an Issa Erva for another brother, this is possible to be by all of the Issa Arayas that were mentioned in the first Mishnah and the Masechta. That it's possible that you should have a case where it's an Issa Erva for one and not for the other. Rashi here says that if you want to look back on Daft test, there's a long Rashi there where Rashi goes through all the cases to explain how that's possible. Okay, so now the Gemara over here will bring three opinions whether this actually applies to all of the cases that were said in the beginning and the Arayas that were mentioned in the beginning of the Masechta or not. So the Gemara brings three opinions here. So the Gemara, V'Rav Yehuda, Metarge, Mechamaisei Ve'elech. Rav Yehuda says that you could only apply our case of the Mishnah here to the Arayas that were mentioned in the beginning of the Masechta only from the case of the Erve of a mother-in-law going forward. Right, which means that one sister was the mother-in-law of one brother, another sister was a mother-in-law to the other brother, and from there going forward you could apply it to all the other cases as well. But not the cases before. The cases before, the Moshul, it starts with the first erva in the beginning of the Masechta, it starts with the erva of Bitoi. That case would not be applicable over here, that you have two sisters, and one of them is a daughter of one brother, and another one is a daughter from another brother. That would not work. And the Gemara explains, The six first cases are not mentioned. Why not? My time, Kiven, the Bitoi, because if you want to apply this to the case of the, when you start with the beginning of the, of the Mishnah there, the first Arab mentioned, the case of the daughter, it's only possible to apply it to our Mishnah if this is a daughter that's married of an Oynis, not of a real marriage. Of a, of a relation of an oynis. That's when it's possible. But if this is a daughter that's born from a marriage, this is impossible. Okay, so this is a very simple thing. It's impossible to have two sisters that should also be daughters of two brothers. How could two sisters be daughters of two brothers? They were married to the same wife. They can't be married to the same wife. Elamai, what happened over here? They weren't married to the same wife. One brother had a relation with one wife, not married. Now the other brother went and had a relation with that wife. Since it wasn't his wife's brother, so then there's no Isser of Erva of Kodesi. He went and had a relation with that same wife. So now you could have two sisters that share the same mother and are also, one of them is a the daughter of one brother, another one is a daughter of another brother. So this is only possible by Einstein, but not if there was a marriage over here to this one mother. So, so therefore, he says, B'nisu and Kamaidi, the Mishnah there that mentions the erva of Bitoi, it's talking about Bitoi of a real marriage. Ba'inzin like Kamaidi. It's not talking about Bitoi that's a daughter of a relation with a woman that was not out of a marriage. And therefore, Bitoi is, cannot be applied over here to this case. And just like Bitoi can't, so we don't count all the other cases. There was Bitoi, Baspanoi, and uh, so on. All the cases related to Bitoi, which are six cases, we don't count included over here to apply to our Mishnah. That's Rav Yehuda's opinion. So to Gemara, another opinion on this. Abayah says, no, we could explain and apply all the arayas of the Mishnah, the beginning of the Masechta, even the case of Bitoi, we could, we could apply it to the case of Bitoi Manasasai, as we just explained. Since by Manasasai it is possible to have two sisters that should also be daughters of two brothers, and one is a daughter of one brother and one is a daughter of the other brother. So, if you want to apply the case of the mission of Bita there regarding Einstein, it could be regarding the case of Einstein. If you want to apply it to the case of Nisuin, the other cases in the Mishnah that are talking about Nisuin, it could be about Nisuin. He doesn't have a problem with the fact that that Mishnah is talking about a case of a daughter that's born of Einstein. 
Okay, but he says there is one case that cannot apply to our Mishnah. The concept of which means when there's a brother that's born later. He was not alive when the brother that passed away was married to his wife. And over there the Mishnah says that then there's no mitzvah of Yibam. You weren't in the world together with your brother. That case, loy. That case that's mentioned in the first Mishnah of the Masechta could not be applied over here to our Mishnah to say that these two sisters, one of them is the Eish Yisach of Shleihoye by Lomi for one brother, and one of them is the Eish Yisach of Shleihoye by Lomi for the other brother, that can't apply. Why not? So he says, because the Aliba de Rab Shimon, who the Mishkachasla. Actually, only according to the opinion of Rab Shimon, it will be possible that one sister will be Aisha Sakhav Shlehaya by Lame for one brother, and the other sister will be Aisha Sakhav Shlehaya by Lame for another brother. The Gemara will soon explain exactly how that's possible. But this is only possible according to Rab Shimon, which has a much more limited opinion to what this Isser of Aisha Sakhav Shlehaya by Lame is. But Aliba de Rabbana, Lame Mishkachasla. According to the Rabbana, that have a much broader understanding of it's not applicable. And therefore, the Mishnah is not speaking about a case of a machlaikis. To connect these two Mishnayis and to say that he was saying the case regarding a case which is a machlaikis, only according to the Rab Shimon and not according to the Rabbanan, we're not speaking about that. Rav Safra metargem af eishesachah shlei hoya by lomay. Rav Safra says you can apply what it says in our Mishnah. Ho asura lezeh muteres lezeh, ho asura lezeh muteres lezeh, even to the case of eishesachah shlei hoya by lomay. And it is possible to say that one sister is also to one brother with this, and another sister is only also to the other brother. And the Gemara now spells out the whole case of here. Let's see. The case of here is going to be possible when you have six brothers, Reuven, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda, Yisachar, and Zvulun. And the Gemara will actually soon finish off another two brothers, God and Asher. Well, let's start with six brothers. And this will work according to Rab Shimon. Okay, so before I read the Gemara inside, just to remind you what the Machlaik is between Rab Shimon and the Rabbanon was, Rab Shimon says that the Isser of Eishas Achav Shlehoye by Lamai only applies if that new brother that's born is born between. Between the brother that passed away and the second brother that went ahead and did Yibum. If he was born in between, so because he had a shaykh to this woman that was there in this moment of Zika, coming from the first brother, and he was not in the lifetime of that first brother, so for him, she becomes a woman that's also for him because of Eishas Achav Shlehoye by Lamai. But if he's born after the second brother already did the Yibum, so he has no shaykhs to her from the marriage of the first brother. So for, for him, he was alive when the second brother was married to her. That's Rabbi Shimon's opinion. Rabbana disagree. Rabbana says it doesn't matter when the new brother is born. If the new brother is born because he wasn't alive when the first brother was married to her, for him this is always Eish Yisach of Shlehoi by Lamai. So now, only according to Rab Shimon that says that only the brother that's born in between is there an issue of Eish Yisach of Shlehoi by Lamai, this is going to work. Let's see in the words of the Gemara. So first the Gemara gives a simon and then it spells out the case. V'simonech, the simon over here of this case is, Meis, one brother passed away, then Neilat, another brother is born, and after that V'yibim, another brother did Yibim. And then again, Meis, another brother passed away, and Neilat, now another brother is born, and then V'yibim. And now another brother went and did Yibim. So these are six brothers in total. And what's the case here? Reuven v'shimin asun sh'te'achayis. Reuven v'shimin are married to two sisters. And Levi Yehuda Nesuyin Shtei Nochriyos. And Levi Yehuda are married. They're married to two wives not, that are not related to one another. And now what happened? Meis Reuven, Reuven passes away. But now Neilad Yisachar. Yisachar is this new brother, this Eish Yisach of Shlehoye Bailami that's born in between. Because he's born right after Reuven passes away. And then the Yibam Levi. And now y- Levi does Yibam. And then, okay, so that's the first part of the case. So now for Yisachar, this wife over here of Reuven is an issue because he was born in between Reuven passing away and Levi doing the Yibum. Then what happens? Meis Shimon. Shimon passes away. And now Neilat Zvulun. Now Zvulun is born in between. Zvulun is born after Shimon passes away in the Yibim Yehuda. And Yehuda went ahead and did Yibum. Okay, so now for Zvulun, it's Shimon's wife that's an issue for him because he's born in between Shimon passing away and Yehuda doing the Yibum. Now what happened? Meisu, Levi, Yehuda. Now Levi and Yehuda both passed away. Belay Bana without any children. V'naf luluhu kame Yisachar zvulon. And now the wife of Levi and Yehuda, and we're talking about the, the wife of Levi and Yehuda, that were once before Reuven and Shimon's wife, now fall for Yibum for Yisachar and Zvulun. 
So what's going to be the halacha? Ha asura lezeh, muteres lezeh. Over here you could apply the case that we said before, that for one brother, for Yisachar, that wife of Reuven, he was born between Reuven and Shimon. So therefore, for him, that wife is the one that's going to be asur. But the other one, it's going to be mutter. For the other one, he was alive when, when Shimon was alive. He was alive when Yehuda was alive. For him, the other one is not an issue, Bukhla. So therefore, Asura Lezeh, Mutaris Lezeh. And the same thing in the reverse, Asura Lezeh, Mutaris Lezeh. For Zvulun, Zvulun, he was born in between Shimon passing away and Yehuda doing Yemen. For, so for him, it's that wife, that, that wife that's an issue. But for the other one, for the wife of Reuven, that Shimon did Yemen for, that, uh, not, not Shimon, sorry, Levi's the one that did Yemen for, it's not going to be an issue for him. Again, this is all based on Rabbi Shimon's opinion that says that Eishis Achav Shleih Hayabai Lama is only an issue for you if you were born in between the first brother passing away and the second brother doing the Yibum. Not if you were born after, or for sure if you were born before, there's no issue. Okay, so therefore we could apply this case according to Rabbi Shimon. But still, there's one detail that the Gemara spelled out here in this case that seemed to be unnecessary. If you want to explain this case, which is that you have one brother, again, there's this case that we're talking about, that for one brother, there's the issue of for one sister, and for the other brother, you have that issue for the other sister. So the Gemara asks, Why did the Gemara, when it explained the case, have to say that Yehuda went and did Yibum for uh, for for uh, Shimon's wife. Why did I have to mention that? Below Yibim Yehuda Nami. Even if Yehuda never went ahead and did Yibim for Shimon's wife, Mishkach Asla. The exact same thing applies for Zvulun that was born after Shimon passed away. For him, it's Eishes Achav Shleihaya by Lamai. For Yisachar that was alive when Shimon was married to her, it's not Eishes Achav Shleihaya by Lamai. That last detail of that Yehuda went and did Yibum for Shimon's wife doesn't add anything to the case over here to explain how you have Eishes Achav Shleihaya by Lamai for one brother and not for the other brother. Says the Gemara, you're right, that it, you could have it without that as well. But the only reason why it said it over here is Mishum Tzara, because I wanted to explain to you how you would apply this halacha of Eishis Achav Shleihoi by Lomai for one brother and not for the other brother, also regarding the Tzara. And that is the Tzara of Levi and Yehuda. That Levi and Yehuda, when they went and did Yibum for Reuven and Shimon's wives, Levi and Yehuda, like it said in the beginning of the case, were married to another wife before. And we want to apply that also, that once there's an Isser for the first wife, that this applies to the Tzara as well. That's the halacha of the first mission of the Masechta. Whatever Easter there is for one wife applies to the second wife as well. So we're saying that Yehuda did Yibum to explain how that Easter applies to the Tzara. Says the Gemara, hot teinach tzara. So that explains how it applies to the tzara. Tzara did tzara ma'ikulameimar. But the Mishnah in the beginning of the Masechta says that you could apply this to the, another case of a tzara of a tzara. How would that apply? Says the Gemara, okay, so you'll add another two brothers here. What happens over here if Levi and Yehuda pass away? And after Levi and Yehuda pass away, God and Usher came and did Yibum for, and God, God and Usher were alive from the beginning. They're, they're not Eishas Achav Shleib by Lama, they were alive all the way from the beginning. So now God and Usher came along and did Yibum not for those wives that fell from Reuven and Shimon that Levi and Yehuda did Yibum for. God and Usher did Yibum for the Tzara, for the second wife of, 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 of Yehuda and uh, Shimon. And now, they are the tzara, and now after God and Asher passes away, the tzara of the tzara will be a Eishis Achav Shlehoye by Lame for one brother and not for the other brother. So it's just, you just have to continue the case, just add it another two brothers that did Yibum for the tzara, and then it becomes a tzara of a tzara, like we learned already in the beginning of the Masechta and the first Mishnah. Okay, Zokta Heilige Mishneh, Shloisha Achim. If you have three brothers, Shnaimem, the Sunni Shtei Achayis, and two brothers are married to two sisters. Oi, Isha, Bita, or they're married to another kind of relation. S -s similar concept to two sisters. It's a mother and a daughter. Oi, another kind of relation. Isha, Ubas, Bita, a mother or a grandmother that is and a granddaughter. Oi, Isha, Ubas, Bina, a grandmother and a granddaughter through a son. Hare Elu, so the halacha that we already said before, basically the same halacha. Hare Elu, Cholzes, Veloy, Mesiabmais. So over here, you have these two sisters because you're married to two sisters, so it's an issue of a chais zikukasai. 
So therefore you say, you apply the same thing also to any other relation. Isha or Bita, so you could do only Chalitza, this is Exerim Eder Abanon. The Tanakhami here says it's Exerim Eder Abanon, that a Chayisuk Ukasa, you could only do Chalitza and not Yibum. Rab Shimon, Poiter. Now Rab Shimon disagrees with what it says here in this Mishnah, and really disagrees with what it said in the previous Mishnah. In a case where you have two sisters, and it's a Chayzik Ukasai, then even Minat Taira, there's no Yibum at all, and therefore there's no Chalitza either. Says the Mishnah Vaiter, again, this is a repetition of Allah that we learned before. If one of these sisters was also for him, uh, on one of these brothers now, Issa Erve, so now, for him, there's only one sister or, or one of these relatives that are available for Yibam. So therefore, Asr Ba, that one that's a Issa Erva, he can't do Yibam for, but Umutu Ba Chaysa, you can do Yibam for the sister. If it's a Isser Mitzvah or Isser Kedusha, if one of these sisters is only a Isser of Erva Midar Abonon or only a Isser Erva which is a Lav, so then Chaylza is Valei Misiyabmais. In such a case, you do only Chalitza and not Yibam. This is basically a repetition of the previous Mishnah, as the Gemara will ask now here and explain. But first, the Gemara explains the new opinion that we have here in the Mishnah, which is Rab Shimon. Tanya. So we learned in the Brayse that it explains this. Rab Shimon, Paiter Bishteyan, Menachalitza Umena Yibom. Rab Shimon says, when you have a Chais Zikukasa, it's not just Exerim the Rabbanon that there's no Yibom, but only Chalitza. He says, you know Chalitza and no Yibom either. Shanama, he learns it from Apostik. V'isha el Achaisa leisikach Litzray. Do not marry a wife and a sister. That's a simple shot of the Pasik. But he touches the words, Leisikach Litzre, to say, Bisha Shanasu Tzareis, Zulu in a time when they're becoming Tzareis to one another, which means when they both fall for Yibum together, you should not marry either of them. So you read the Pasik, Leisikach, do not marry sisters, Litzre. If they are falling for Yibum together, there's no Yibum, there's no Chalitza at all. That's Rav Shimon's opinion, so this is Minatayra. Then the Mishnah said, Why does the Mishnah say this whole case over here again? This is literally a repetition of the same concept that we said in the previous Mishnah of Asura Lezeh, Mutaras Lezeh, Asura Lezeh, it's the same thing. Says the Gemara, Hai Nuhach, it's like we learned this before already. And says the Gemara, Le Rab Shimon, Itzrich. It's only saying the case again according to Rab Shimon, that even Rab Shimon agrees to this. So, I would think that maybe according to Rab Shimon we should be more machmer. Since Rab Shimon said, when it comes to two sisters, that there's no chalitza and there's no yibim, because Minat Taira, this is a problem. So Ligzar, Mishum, Bezachoye is the Alma, so maybe he would be more Machmer. That even in a case where one sister is a Erva and one is not, but because this Isra of doing Yibum for a sister is a Isra Taira, you should be geyser that you might compare this to another case where both sisters, one of them is not an Erva. Kamash Malon, that's where the Mishnah repeats the Allah again, that even according to Rab Shimin, we're not geyser that, and if one of them is a Erva, you can do the Yibum for the other sister.